All right, Nick, let's talk about the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons, quite frankly, Nick, uh, are very, very close offensively to being a, a high-powered team. I think per PFF, this is the tied second uh, highest performing offense in the NFL at this point. So it's a very, very interesting team. And I think we go into this coming offseason, Nick, and there's reason to look forward, reason to be excited about the Falcons going down the stretch. There was a lot of bright points on this team overall, and I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be at times. But Nick, I, you know, before we get into the story, just about why the Falcons have reason to look forward this coming season, I want to know, Falcons fans, you missed the playoffs. You know, it may not ended just exactly how you wanted to, but let's take solace in that we are in the postseason. We don't have to worry. We can watch the other teams play. That's nice sometimes, maybe not quite as much. But I want to know, I'm just curious, who is your ideal Super Bowl matchup? What are the teams that you would like to see to make it? Is there someone that you think would make an interesting matchup? Let us know in the comments below. But Nick, what do the Falcons have to look forward to this coming offseason and 2023 season? Yeah, you brought up Pro Football Focus PFF, and they do a lot of great evaluation because they just look at the film, they look at the tape, and try and grade and evaluate quality of players for people that aren't aware with PF aren't aware of what PFF does. And I think what's very interesting when you look at the Falcons and some reasons to be positive, PFF kind of highlighted in an article, and I'll just read through some of it here. Is that um, the I'll just read here from the report. The Falcons have hit on some draft picks over the past two seasons between Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and a hidden gym in fifth round pick Tyler uh, Algier. Is that how you pronounce the name yeah. Algier? I, I keep giving that wrong. Uh, while Pitt's season was abruptly ended by injury, he still ranked among top 10 in his position in key categories. Uh, London finished with the second highest receiving grade among rookie wide receivers, 85.3, showing off great hands with a low 2.7% drop rate. Um, Algier led all rookie running backs, all of them. That's pretty impressive. We got guys like Kenneth Walker and then Brees Hall from the Jets. Led all rookie running backs in rushing grade with an 88.0, which is staggering, and had over 1,000 yards and over 750 yards of contact, uh, yards after contact. All right, Miles, what does this mean? It means that the all the people that thought the Falcons were, you know, hey, the cupboard is bare. They move on from Ridley. They trade him for the Jaguars. Obviously, Pitts looks like he has talent. London looks like he has talent. You know, are they really just Cordell Patterson? People that don't understand and don't watch his team or follow his team, I think they get it wrong. We talk about the Falcons having a talented roster a bunch. I think this team is really stacked, certainly at the skill position and in other areas as well. If they can get better at quarterback, namely Desmond Ritter or maybe somewhere else in the offseason, this team could be a real threat in 2023 and beyond. Miles, give me your thoughts on Atlanta right now. Yeah, Nick, I think there's a lot of bright spots on this Atlanta team. And today we're kind of specifically focusing on the offense. You know, the defense, there are bright spots there. Mainly Grady Jarrett is really nice. Uh, the, the young guy, uh, Arnold Ebicady, he looks He's like good. he could be uh, potentially a, a great player. But, you know, there's a lot of upgrades to be done on the defensive side of the ball. We all know that. But specifically taking a step back, looking at the offense, you know, Nick, I think there's a few key positions that could be upgraded and provide immense value for the Falcons. As you said, number one receiver, Drake London, he seems like a guy. You know, uh, Pitts seems, and we've known him to be, an excellent tight end. Uh, Tyler Algier, very, very impressive, Nick. You know, per BFF, fifth overall running back out of all running backs, not just rookies. He seems to be a really, really, like, as they called it, a steal of a draft pick in the fifth round. That's just incredible. And then that right side of the offensive line, the guard and Lindstrom, the tackle and McGarry, if McGarry decides to come back, which I, I think that he will, I think that this team is really set up. If they could make upgrades maybe at the center position, maybe a, a little bit of a stronger uh, number two wide receiver, Nick, I think we're looking at a really strong Falcon team down the stretch because uh, pairing a guy with London, I think Olamide Zacchaeus has done really great this year, but I don't think he's necessarily uh, your best option there. I think you get another guy who really bolsters this team, a top-tier talent, and then you just uh, bolster the offensive line a little bit more, and the Falcons are humming, Nick. This is an offense that really seems to be powerful. Yeah, especially when you look at their cap space, 57 million bucks, roughly, according to over the cap.com of cap space the Atlanta Falcons have going into this offseason. So that means they're set up to just spend money like there's no tomorrow to bring in quality veterans. And I kind of look at what the Jacksonville Jaguars did last offseason, getting all kind of veteran receivers. And a lot of people said, hey, look, you overpaid for Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram and Zay Jones. Well, we just saw it, right? The Jacksonville Jaguars, they won the AFC South. They won their division. They won a playoff game. They're still playing. It's in the divisional round. We'll see how it shakes out for them. But the future looks really bright for Jacksonville, even though they 
overpaid according to a lot of the experts when they had the dollars to pay and go get guys. I think the Falcons are in the same position and should follow that same model. They just have to shore up a couple of those key spots like you alluded to. And if they do that, and hopefully Desmond Ritter continues to develop and get better, this team is probably the contender to win the NFC South next year. I think they're the best team roster-wise in that whole division. And with Tom Brady likely gone after next season, this is the number one team in that division.